So, I've been doing YouTube a long time, and it is very rare that I find something that if you Google search, it comes up with just the most random thing ever. And so that's why we're doing this video today. This is going to be me figuring out how to take this 633 <laughs> Roper out of this GT6000. And I'm not labeling this a how-to because this is new to me. You're just along for the ride on this video. The reason why I said it's very rare to find something that you Google is if you type into Google remove or how to remove a 633, you get nothing but randomness. This transmission removal how-to videos, they don't show up. And there's a reason for that. Have you ever heard of those Ford pickup trucks where you have to literally rip the entire cab off of the truck in order to be able to pull the engine? These are Craftsman and Sears equivalent to that theory. Everything has to come off, basically, to get this transmission out of here. But, once we get this transmission out of here, we've got a diesel... And we've got a weed eater that we're going to cram it into. Stay tuned. Let's get that transmission out. I've had a lot of questions about these. These are 14-inch 1990s Ford Ranger wheels. Um, guys figured out a long time ago that the Ford Ranger pattern is the exact same as one of these 633 hubs with the exception that you need spacers to bring it out just a little bit, or you have to grind out the inside of the Ford Ranger wheel in order to fit over the little bit of a bump that's on the inside of these. So just a side note, I won't be running these most likely when I end up building the dragster out of this. I just threw these on so I could roll it around the yard and everything. So if I'm right, we should be able to pull these and pull this. And these two springs shouldn't matter, but there we're disassembling the whole thing anyway. I'm going to pull them and the two springs ended up being half inch. The center one ended up being a 9 16 and now these two side ones, these should be 9 16 And they are. And the other thing I noticed is there's a hidden 9 16 up in here I didn't see before. Oh, gonna need to go and get a swivel. So we'll go get that out on the other side. Well, and that right there is why it is even a lifetime guarantee swivel you're not supposed to use on an impact. Oh, whatever. I bet AutoZone will give me another one. I'm on my fourth one so far. A couple of 916s here on the floorboard. Apparently a previous owner decided to round the back side of that one off to the point that's going to need to be done with a grinder. So let's see if this one will move. Okay. 
And this is one of my favorite tools when you're dealing with this. It's a pair of Duralas that have vice grip handles in them for adjustables. If you're looking for a Christmas present, these things are pretty cool. There we go. Voila. See if I can pop that off on video. Yeah. Alright, so if we pull the gas tank and we cap and we got everything I think we need to, in theory this should come off. So it looks to me like we got a couple of 916ths here that need to come out. And luckily those seem to be tapped in. There's no bolts on the other side. So we'll pull that off and see if this lifts out of the way. Oh, there we go. So now we can see the internals here. So this is our shifter. So we come back and over and then in, neutral, there's that, and there's that. So now we can see if this thing will actually go into gear. I haven't even been able to test that. So. We take and we pop that into gear like so. We should be able to rotate this and see if something happens. Yay! There we go. So if we shift that into reverse and we rotate this pulley here, Yahoo! Okay, good to go. So, this is why I was saying you pretty much have to go and take everything off in order to get to the brakes. This is your brake caliper here with your disc here. Now, some of these also, they have a rotary band set up. Um, this setup is obviously better, as anybody knows, dealing with drum versus disc brakes. And so this is your adjuster if you're ever having issues with your brakes. In order to be able to tighten it up, the further in that this goes, the harsher that it presses on your brakes. But if you're already into about right in here, then your brake pads are probably almost gone. So just keep that in mind if you're using this adjuster in order to play with stuff. All right, so from the look of it, it looks as if it is just about floating only on these rear bolts in this area. So I think what I'm going to do, just so that we can all see better, is take... Well, actually, no, I can't take this off in order to be able to lift it on my chain hoist. Because I was going to take those off so we could see better. Well, I don't know. If I could ask you guys what your thoughts were, I would. But here's our cross brace. This is the other reason why I wanted to get in here. I want this cross brace to go and come out. And so that goes to these bolts here. And as you can see, they're not... It doesn't look like they're captive or welded in place. It looks as if they're loose. So if I had tried to go and spin those off, they would have just 
done nothing. So we're going to drop this out of here now. I just realized I forgot to show you how the high-low works. So up is high, down is low. So if we look in here, I'll see if I can get the camera there. There's a pivot right here that it attaches to in order to move around. See right there. So that goes back through and goes through right in here. There's another plate here and then it comes down to this. So that's low, this is high, and this is rolling neutral. Now you might be wondering yourself why it is that I have a piece of go-kart chain link here for a piece of 40 series chain. And that's because I wanted to demonstrate what this is, the coupler for the high-low. It's essentially an elongated version of this. So on this side here is one of these stupid clips that everybody lovingly hates. And the rest of it is just a slide piece like this that goes through like this. And as you can see, it's some sort of weird, strange size that who knows what it is. I'll have to look it up. But... We'll get it out of there. Five minutes and several non-appropriate for YouTube words later. Well, in theory, we're at the point where we should be able to get this out. So these are 5 eighths with a 5 eighths backing. There's a 5 eighths here and a 5 eighths here. It's the exact same on the other side. We've got our bobble level here in order to make sure we don't tip stuff off. So let's see if it'll come out. That was good and professional. Now, these side ones are actually tapped right directly into the case. And I'm going to assume that it's just because of the steel to aluminum, but this 200 pound impact is just barely moving them. So on these axle one here, yeah, you can do it. That's not happy trying to get those out. They're pretty darn ruggedly in there. See, that one actually had some rust in it that might have been part of the problem. Well, let's keep an eye on our bobble level and see if this will lift up. Nope, that's lifting with it. So what am I missing here? Oh, I see what I'm missing. So what I didn't realize was that right in here, I missed that this was actually over the top of it. So I guess I'm going to try and take those two out and see what happens. 
And we're going to set these directly aside because I'm going to put that bracket piece back on once this is out. And the other thing that I did preemptively was I took the brake out, the uh, brake rod, because otherwise this was going to have to go down and then back through. And I wanted to just go straight down. And taking the brake rod out the front was really easy. So let's see if we can get it to lift up and out now. And we'll keep our bobble level in place and try not to drop it off. I think it should sit nice and level. Now we're still catching on something. What are we catching on? Oh, I see. This right here is sitting in. So if we slide it forward a little bit. And set this back as far as it goes, maybe? No, nope, that is back as far as it goes. Alright, we've got the shifter back as far as it goes. So we're going to lift it up a little bit. And right now we're definitely floating. Let's reposition you guys. So we're definitely floating right now. See, I can pass my hand all the way underneath. So maybe if I maybe if I lift the transmission just a little bit and bring it forward. Oh, there we go. There we go. We got the entire thing out and ready to go and see if we can manage to wedge it into there. All right, well, I'm going to take a few other things off of this and go through it. Like for the transfer, obviously, I need to be able to know exactly where these holes are. So what I'm going to probably do is take this entire panel and slice it right off of here so that I have it as a template in order to mark on the other transmission tunnel. And obviously I'm going to pull the shifter setup plate out of there and I'm going to immediately put this bracket back on because this bracket here tells me exactly how close that each of these are. So if I can take this bracket and put it up against this and have it be the same width, then this becomes a bolt-in affair. If not, I just signed up for a lot more work. Ready? That is really close. I'm gonna bet I can turn this into a bolt-in affair. Alright guys, that's the end of this video.